Well, first of all, I'm going to select a scoop coder for this uh, coding assignment. And I need something that will fit my screen without running up on the edges of the frame or even running too close to the frame. So here's the edge of the frame. And on the opposite side, uh, we have plenty of room to run inside without bumping into the frame and getting stuck. Right, so this will work fine. Um, so this particular scoop coder has a coating edge, and it has an edge for where, where you can hold it. Okay, and then the next step is going to be to put some emulsion into this scoop coder. So these are made so that they'll sit on the table. Uh, they're fairly stable, and very carefully we're going to fill the trough with enough emulsion to coat the screen. It's not going to require a whole lot. Okay. And we always keep the container closed uh, in between whatever we're doing so that air doesn't drop dirt and uh, dust and things like that inside that emulsion. If it's left open overnight, will it dry? It'll dry out and then it's no good. Okay. And so we have to keep that closed uh, airtight also uh, free from dust and dirt and hair and things like that. And how much is usually a gallon of something like that? Uh, a gallon is about uh, 70 or 80 dollars and it'll, it'll coat a lot of screens um, but it has to be kept clean and covered and in a safe lighted room like we're in uh, where there's no white light, only yellow light, uh, it can't be exposed to heat, it can't be frozen. Uh, it could be kept in a refrigerator and that'll prolong the, the shelf life. So if you're not coating a lot of screens, um, you can keep it in the fridge where it's cool or any other cool place, and that'll make that last longer. But generally, once you open that, um, there's about three months uh, window that you have to use that uh, or it's going to expire, okay? Um, so we're gonna start with a coat on the flat side. I'm gonna set this down so my hands are free. And I'm going to, since we have an easel here, uh, that makes it a little easier to coat because uh, it keeps the screen up in the air and uh, I can clamp it on there so I have a little assistance holding it. If you don't have an easel, you can just lean the screen like this uh, in the, against the wall and you can coat uh, the screen at a little bit of an angle like this, but of course, <laughs> You have to squat down in order to do that, so it's a little less comfortable than having an easel like this. Um, all right, so uh, to coat the screen, I'm going to place this scoop coater on the first, first coat is on the flat side of the screen, what's known as the print side, and I'm going to place this about an inch above the bottom of the screen and press it very tightly against the mesh and tip it until the emulsion is touching all the way along the edge of the scoop coater. So I have emulsion all along the edge there. And then with the, the coater at a little bit of an angle, so there's emulsion flowing down, I'm going to pull that up with a kind of an even smooth stroke and stop an inch or so from the top, let the emulsion fall back into the coater. I'm still putting pressure on it and then sort of scrape it off. So I don't end up with a big blob of emulsion at the top there. And I'll set that down, take this out of the clamp, and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going the opposite direction, and I'm going to put the next coat on the opposite side of the screen. All right, on what we call the squeegee side. And uh, same as before, about an inch from the top, pressure, 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 so the motion doesn't sneak under the edge of the coater, and tip it until the emulsion is touching all the way along the edge. There it goes. And then with a nice even stroke and a firm pressure and pre pressing hard, slide it up, stop an inch or so from the top, tip it back, let it fall back into the trough, and then scrape it off. So that's called two, that's two coats, um, one on each side. So we end up with the, the greatest deposit of emulsion on this side 
So first we pushed it through this way, and then we pushed it back through this way. So we have more emulsion on this side of the screen than we do on this side, which is what we want. We want that bottom layer to be thick and fairly even. Uh, then the screens are placed either in a device like this or in some kind of a little device you can figure out how to make at home where they can dry horizontally with that print side, the flat side down, so that that layer of emulsion on the bottom becomes slightly thicker and totally encapsulates the screen mesh. And that will take about um, three or four hours to dry uh, under good conditions, so it's nice and warm in this room. We have a little space heater uh, tucked under the light table here. And people have placed their screens right next to it. Does that speed up the process? They've done that to help their emulsion dry. So I would suggest you leave it flat for at least a half hour so that that coating can start to harden up and then you can place the screen in front of a dryer like this and that will shorten your, your drying time a great deal. And not place it right in front of it. Yeah, not right in front we just, and, and we don't block the air from kind of moving through the room too. But that dries things very quickly and then they're going to be ready to go. All right. Once we're done coating the screen, we still have emulsion in the trough. It's perfectly good. So anything that's left can be returned to the container and then used uh, in the future to coat another screen. So we save old cardboard and cut it into little squares that make it easy to scrape out as much as we can from the scoop coater. And then the scoop coater will be washed thoroughly so this is not left to dry in there or on the edges. And uh, What happens if it's left to dry? Well, then it becomes very sort of uneven on the edges and it's hard to clean out because there are thick and gunky parts in it. So it's part of just taking care of your tools and uh, keeping your shop nice to clean things when you're done and that way when you're ready to use them again the next time, they're clean, they're, everything is sharp and ready to go. And, uh, uh, um, and here's some examples of screens that are not going to work. Uh, this one uh, was coated with way too heavy of a coat of emulsion. And so you can see that it's thick in some areas. There are big drips all over it. Uh, there's no way we can use this screen. We'll just have to wash it out and all that emulsion is wasted. Um, if we try to burn this screen, the problem is that we have thicker layer of emulsion here than we do here. And so the exposure time, if this is sort of the correct layer of emulsion, our exposure time is set to expose and properly, um, you know, give a thorough coating of, or a thorough exposure of light to this much emulsion. So if there's more here, this doesn't get exposed enough. And these parts certainly will not get exposed enough. And so when we go to wash out the screen, this might be fine, but this part will probably all fall off of the mesh. And so we won't have a nice clean image or clean edges if we're working from a, a good area to a bad area like that. So we just can't use this at all. And I'm washing out my tools. Okay, and emulsions are water soluble until they get exposed to light. And so as long as we do this fairly quickly during the process, uh, we should be able to get this off of here pretty easily. All right, this stirring stick was left uh, to dry a little bit, so it's a little harder to get off that it's coming. Let that soak a little more. And in this. So it doesn't need any soap or... No, it'll just, just dissolve in water with a little bit of scrubbing, sponge or scrub pad, brush. And then the squish order will be ready to be used by somebody else. Try to get all the little kind of grooves and corners. Okay, and then 
I'll dry that and put it back on the shelf.